Welcome back, everyone. It's Stefan Husa57 here. We're on Destiny in the DLC, The Dark Below, and today we'll be talking about the weapon, the Husk of the Pit, which is a upgradable weapon. It's a rare weapon to get. You can only get it by killing Blades of Crota, which uh, you can either repeat the first mission uh, for the Eris Morn DLC, or you can run around and play patrol on the moon and the earth and try and hunt the Blades of Crota and kill them. It's a rare chance that you get this weapon, but when you do get it, it drops this particular weapon. It's a white. It automatically shows up in your inventory, Husk of the Pit, and it's an upgradable weapon. So you're going to see this upgrade, the only upgrade for it, which uses an embalming orb and also the material details. And supposedly, I have not tested it because, well, I only have one, but if you dismantle it, you'll get an embalming orb. So to actually get the embalming orb, you're going to come over here in the tower and talk to Eris Morn. And you need to be Crota's Bane rank 3 or higher to actually buy the embalming orb. And it costs 10 black wax idols and you have to have the Dark Below DLC in Crota's Bane rank 3. So I'll go ahead and buy one of those. And then we'll take a look at being able to upgrade the weapon, but you can't. Well, you can go ahead and actually upgrade it. Well, you have the material to, but you have to actually unlock the upgrade first, which is why I have the telemetry right here in my inventory for auto rifles. So I'll use one of those, and then I'm going to turn in all of these bounties, which you shouldn't need a whole lot of XP to level it up. So I'll turn in the Eris Morn bounties, which I had all four of those, and see if that is enough XP to level it. Um, alas, it is not. So sadly, that uh, this weapon apparently does not level by uh, the same means that normal weapons do, where uh, you can use uh, bounties to level them. So since that doesn't work, you're actually going to have to take the weapon out and uh, use it. You're going to have to go kill Hive. Uh, basically, you can go anywhere, but you're going to want to do whatever the lowest level strikes that you have or lowest level missions that you have available because that is going to be the easiest way of actually uh, getting that bounty done. I just had some other weapons on me that I'm upgrading. So I still have the auto rifle telemetry, which should help, but you're looking for any mission that has a lot of hive. Um, supposedly, you can try doing the very first part of the raid and killing those hive, but because this weapon is a uncommon, it does not do... It, it basically does very little damage at all to hive. Um, it does very little damage at all period so one of the easiest things that you can do I'll show you that uh, there's a, a couple missions that you can do it just depends upon really what you want uh, Shrine of Oryx is an easy one uh, that you can do and you can do it just you know I recommend the lowest level uh, or you can do patrols and go to like uh, Cosmodome go to the sky watch or you could do the omni goal strike there's a bunch of different ways that you could actually uh, get hive to level this weapon up now the problem is since this weapon is a white weapon it's a common weapon with only 138 attack it doesn't do very much damage and you're going to burn a ton of ammo so if you want to do it quickly i recommend that you have that telemetry for auto rifles equipped at the time and you also have plenty of white ammo synthesis which is your primary ammo synthesis i bought the embalming orb ahead of time so that i don't have to go back to the tower and do it now this weapon looks cool uh, it's got a really interesting sight on it it is an auto rifle and fires fully automatic. The problem with it at this point is the fact that it does very low damage. I'm a level 31, these are only level 6s, and as you can see, at best on a critical, it only does 59 damage a shot. It has very fast fire rate, 
but it has poor accuracy and very low impact, as well as it has a slow reload rate. It's about the same reload rate that the Suros has, except it does way less damage. As you can see, at best on a critical, it's 59 damage. Now, I mean, that's not bad because this weapon, the whole thing about it is it's the upgradable weapon. It starts off as a white, but eventually you'll upgrade it to the with the embalming orb, and that will give you your legendary and then when the hard raid comes out in January you can then upgrade it even farther with a piece from killing Crota on hard and make it into an exotic. So as you can see I've killed those few hive and it didn't really level up very much even with the telemetry. For some reason when you're doing this weapon it uh it takes a lot to actually level it up. It's kind of weird when it comes to its XP. The fact that it doesn't gain any XP from bounties, uh, the fact that it actually requires the amount of XP from kills along the lines of something like um, a legendary, which is really weird. And it only gets its XP from killing Hive. So you can just bypass all this, or you could do the very first mission on the moon, but you do still have some fallen, and whatever you do, you want to do very low level missions due to the if fact that this correctly. weapon is very, very weak, uh, at least at this point in the game. So kind of depends upon your personal preference as to what you want to do. Um, I am just doing this mission because there's a lot of hive to deal with which means a lot of XP for the weapon you can come to this area like if you go to the moon and do patrol you can come to this area and level it up uh, you could also try and do strikes with it and only equip it when you get like um, the moon strike summoning pits you know something like that problem is you're going to be fighting higher level monsters and with such a low level damage output per shot you're basically just not going to be able to do a thing and it's going to take forever as you can see i'm only hitting that wizard for 24 damage a shot i mean i've got a million weapons that hit harder than this weapon does so when you're using it at this point to get its level up is really quite a pain it does have a good fire rate so that kind of helps uh, but for its fire rate it's got a very low magazine capacity it's only got 37 rounds Suros has 33 rounds and my Suros does about 200 damage a shot even though I mean granted it is an exotic this is only a uncommon well actually common uh, weapon. It's a white weapon, but being that it can be upgraded to the legendary and then to the exotic is what makes it a really cool weapon. So I'm going to continue to kill Hive and uh, see how long exactly it takes to get enough XP with this weapon to go ahead and uh, unlock the upgrade. I may do several different missions. I may do... Um, maybe even do a little bit of the first part of the raid. I don't recommend you do that because the hive are such a high level that it takes forever to kill them. As you can see, even these level eight hive don't want to die. So completely uh, personal preference what you want to do. If you guys want to fast forward through the, uh, the next part of the video, go ahead. Um, I'm just going to be playing through on these, uh, these different missions trying to kill hive. And since it doesn't matter about the Fallen, the Fallen don't give any XP for this weapon. I don't even worry about killing them. Uh, it takes forever to kill knights with this weapon now. So you're really looking for Acolytes and uh, Thrall. If you have uh, a mission, that's one good thing about the new Omnigol Strike. The new Omnigol Strike, there is a lot of Thrall but the lowest level you're gonna find that strike is 26. So even at 31, it's gonna take you a long time to kill these guys. Um, but kind of personal preference. I mean, if you wanna do that and go about leveling up the weapon maybe a little bit slower, you can do that. 
and uh, I just want to level up this weapon as fast as possible. Now, I did not have any kills with this weapon prior to starting this video because I wanted you to see exactly what it takes to level this weapon up. A lot of people were saying that, oh, it's a very easy weapon to get, and it's not. It requires you to put a lot of work into it to actually get the legendary and then the exotic variants of this weapon. And when you're actually using the weapon, it really it can get on your nerves since it doesn't do much damage per shot. Now you can carry a lot of ammo for this weapon and especially if you have an armor piece that says carry more ammo for auto rifles you can carry almost a thousand rounds of ammunition for the gun which you really do need because it just spits through ammo. So completely complete personal preference on it. I'm kind of upset with the fact that you actually have to kill Hive in order to earn XP for it since there's really not a lot of missions that are very good for killing Hive. Granted you have uh, any mission that you have thralls on or things like that you can uh, you can get a lot of XP from killing them quickly. But again you want to be above their level by quite a bit so that you get the damage dealing bonus and you can kill them faster. These level 8s take about a quarter of a magazine to kill. This ogre, as you can see, I can hit it for 30 damage a shot. An entire magazine barely brought its health down halfway. It takes two magazines at 37 rounds a magazine to kill it and it's only a level 8 ogre. So. Not really a weapon that you want to take into high level strikes um, unless you got, you know, a couple people with you that don't mind helping you out, and, you know, doing the majority of the damage to the enemy and then you can, uh, you know, just finish them off with this weapon. Now, you get any mission that gives you a lot of thrall, like right here, you get a bunch of thrall. That gives the weapon a lot of XP, killing all those thrall and, of course, knights. They, they're annoying because they put up the darkness shield. As you can see, I had 800 rounds of ammo for this gun. Which isn't bad, I mean, it's a lot of ammo. It's just annoying that the weapon doesn't do much damage. I mostly prefer uh, auto rifles that have high impact and high stability. I really don't care about the fire rate. I want a gun that's going to do a lot of damage per shot. You also want to avoid using your melee when you're trying to level up this weapon. As you can see, even with the telemetry, it's not even a quarter of the way done yet. So it takes a lot of hive. And if you're not using that telemetry for auto rifles, it takes easily double the amount of hive kills. So some people say don't waste your telemetry on it since the telemetry only lasts for 30 minutes. But in 30 minutes, you can get a decent number of kills. I mean, you're not going to get definitely enough to level up the weapon. We'll go ahead and try and see if uh, maybe doing a couple other missions might give, you know, more enemies to kill. Uh, now, like this is the Eye of Oryx, which as you can see, I barely do 30 damage a shot to him. And you'll run into a lot of people that say, well, like, keep staying in this boss room here and uh, kill all the little thralls and stuff that spawn. Well, you can kill them, but a lot of times what happens is you don't earn any XP for killing them. Just like they will not count towards your bounties if you have bounties for, say, kill 100 enemies without dying or something like that because it would be too easy for you to just sit in this room and do nothing but kill those little minions. So, kind of uh, kind of annoying there that you got to keep either doing other missions or, you know, something like that, but it doesn't really matter. Now, we'll go ahead and let this end, and then I'll pick another mission to do. And that's basically what you're going to be doing is just continuing to uh, do these missions over and over and over again.
Now, if you want to try and level up this weapon and you don't mind doing it over a longer time period, then you could kind of just equip it whenever you feel like it and not really mess with it too much. Um, there's another mission here on the moon that or on Earth that you can do. If I remember correctly, it is uh, the Dark Within, and uh, that's the Array Station one. You do get a lot of Hive on this particular one, so you can go there. It's even easier because it's a level 3 mission, but, you know, it's, uh, it's personal preference what you want to do. I mean, Hive are worth basically the same XP per kill, uh, regardless of, you know... Uh, what level they are so it doesn't help to do any higher level uh, missions you know it doesn't really necessarily help to do the raid i tried to do the raid the very beginning part with the lanterns because there's so many thrall there and it gave me a little bit of xp towards the husk of the pit but very little like i might have gotten 10 or 20 xp and i killed a whole okay. bunch of thrall so i don't really recommend that uh, you waste your time doing the raid since it takes so much ammunition to kill with this particular weapon now once you get it to legendary that's a, a different story it does more damage it's still not as good as a suros or a shadow price but it's not a bad weapon. I would recommend that if you do want to try and get the exotic, that you go ahead and uh, at least get this leveled up as soon as possible. I have been uh, Crota's Bane rank 3 for a while, and technically you could get around that if you were Crota's Bane rank 1 or rank 2. If you happen to get two of the Husk of the Pit and you broke it down, one of them, you should get an embalming orb from that so that would give you the embalming orb that you need in order to actually uh, upgrade the weapon but I did not get uh, two of these recently and I have not uh, I've been trying to get this weapon actually since the DLC came out and it probably took me about about four hours of farming to actually get this gun and uh, then I just got it off of one random blade of Crota that happened to spawn in uh, one of the missions that I was doing. So there's really no rhyme or reason to it. There's no way to increase the actual, uh, you know, drop chance of it. It's just, uh, just completely random, really. And it seems to have a drop rate close to uh, a high-end legendary because it doesn't show up very often. So this is the first mission on Earth with uh, the Skywatch with all these Thrall. And basically, the first part here where you encounter the Hive for the very first time, you can just sit back and kill them all with this weapon. Since they're only level 3s, you're going to do a lot more damage to them and you're really not going to take much damage from them. So it's an easy way to, uh, to kill them and to get XP for the weapon. Uh, at this point, you don't have to deal with any knights, so you don't have to worry about something that's uh, you know, putting up a shield or anything like that. This mission isn't uh, very long either, so uh, it works out pretty easily. And of course, you know you got more thrall and you got more acolytes that you can kill and they usually drop a decent supply of ammo so you can just keep doing it now another thing that you could do technically at this point is you could die you could kill off all these thrall kill off all the acolytes and then like let the wizard kill you if you wanted instead of having to replay the whole mission and that would give you, uh, you know, the ability to get more XP. As you can see, I was about uh, right at that little plus sign, and then it moved up to maybe a quarter of the way from killing all of these enemy. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, actually do that. I'm gonna let these guys kill me, and then um, I'll restart it. Well, basically respawn and kill them all again, and get more XP for the weapon. And I mean, you can do the same thing if you want, or you could just replay the mission. 
because it will take a while for them to kill you. Since, well, at least for me, I'm 31. Uh, it won't take quite as long if you're like a level 29 or something like that. But then you spawn right here and you have those first few Thrall to deal with. And the Acolytes again. I'll check to see how much XP that I need after I've killed these weapon, these enemy. See how much more XP it's going to take. It would be very nice if they gave you an XP counter instead of that little circle. Like told you, okay, you need 20,000 XP and you've gotten 10,000 of it already. This way you could uh, figure exactly what you need because of every thrall, every acolyte, regardless of their level, is worth approximately 15 XP. Uh, so it can really take a while. I'm going to repeat this process here. Let them kill me again. I'm waiting for them to kill me. I'm going to look at the weapon. As you can see, I was at about the bottom of that circle before I died. So I got another good maybe eighth of an inch of the circle worth of XP. So actually this is a pretty effective method. And uh, these actually do continue to count for XP, which is nice because the ones in Shrine of Oryx, if you were to repeat this on Shrine of Oryx, they would not give you the XP for the ones in the room, So, which is kind of annoying. Now, I'm going to stop with a commentary for now since I'm going to just continue to do this in order to level up the weapon as fast as possible. Hopefully. Alright, so as you can see, I just got the upgrade unlocked there for the Husk of the Pit. It took about, oh, well, 200 kills that time, plus the other three, 400 kills that I had. So it takes quite a few kills to actually do that. And you're going to go into the inventory, and you get the Edelon or Edelon ally when you use the embalming orb on that weapon. So this is the legendary version of it. And you've got um, Cascade, melee kills, increase reload speed to this weapon for a short time. Uh, and then your normal upgrade points, just like any other legendary. Uh, aiming the weapon increases its effective range, and its attack is at 272. So, pretty decent weapon. Um, you'll see for this last upgrade that uh, you need a crux or crota which is the piece that you can get as a drop from killing crota in the hard raid and of course uh, you don't have that available yet because uh, that doesn't come out until january and it's just uh gonna be a bit of a pain to kill crota on hard but uh that's the last piece that you get that piece makes this into a exotic of course, as you can see, even though this weapon's attack went up to 272, it is only critting at 51 against these guys. Now, its magazine capacity does increase to 42 rounds, so it does make the weapon a, a decent legendary to use. Um, I still prefer the Shadow Price because the Shadow Price does more damage per shot and is more accurate but it's really a personal preference as to, uh, as to what you like and um, you know, what weapon you, know, you want to use. Uh, it is a cool weapon in the fact that it's upgradable and supposedly when it gets to the exotic then uh, it's actually a very, very dangerous weapon and it does a lot of damage, so uh, hopefully that's true, but we'll have to wait until the, uh, the hard raid becomes available in order to actually um, to find out and I'm gonna let this uh, let this wizard here kill me or kill myself since the wizard isn't doing a very good job of it and see uh, 
how much XP that gave me for the weapon. It was about another 30 kills there. And it doesn't give you very much XP at all. Uh, it has, we thought that it was uh, innate, but it's grown, changed. Ghost refuses to analyze it further, but I secretly believe it has become my friend. Yeah, that's a little weird. Uh, if you break one of these down uh, now, I don't know what it would give you at this legendary. Uh, but as far as um, it says material details, ascendant energy, crux of crota, which is obtained only by defeating the son of Oryx um, in the raid's most difficult mode. So I would assume if you broke one of these down now, you would not get that, uh, that crux of crota from it. Um, I highly doubt that you would. You'd probably just get ascendant energy like... Uh, any other exotic or not exotic but uh, legendary since it does require ascendant energy for the upgrades and uh, actually what I'm gonna do is go to orbit and um, fast forward through getting this other bounty done but I'll get one more bounty done and then uh, I'll turn in that bounty just to test the theory to see whether or not this actually um, at the legendary state will earn XP from bounties uh, like the normal legendary weapons. I doubt that it will since the actual uncommon version of it did not, but uh, it's worth a try. Since this video is just basically about giving you all the information uh, about this weapon, the Husk of the Pit and the Edon Ally, which is the upgraded version of the Husk of the Pit. So I have one more bounty to do. I'm just going to quickly do that and uh, go from there. So I'm going to fast forward through this part until I uh, get back to the tower. Alright, so I just finished that one bounty and I'm going to go back to the tower, turn it in. Now, looking at it, the Eidolon ally, uh, I did kill a bunch of Vex and Fallen with it, and it earned some XP from killing the Vex and the Fallen. Really thinking that it may earn XP uh, from turning in the bounties as well, which if that's the case, then that would be the easiest way for you to level up this weapon at least uh, until you can uh, get you know the last damage upgrade which won't be until the hard raid comes out uh, it has another ballistic upgrade that increases the stability but further reduces the impact aggressive ballistics reduces range I might use aggressive ballistics on it when I get that unlocked only because it uh, gives a slight boost to impact and stability but this weapon will be uh, definitely better uh, but it's not going to be one of my favorites for auto rifles.
And you, this weapon, the Edelon Ally, does earn XP from turning in bounties. So it's just like any other legendary weapon. You can level it up by turning in bounties, and that's going to be extremely helpful. Um, unlike the actual Husk of the Pit, where you cannot earn XP for the Husk of the Pit while you turn in bounties. So uh, this is definitely a easy weapon now at the legendary state to level up all you have to do is uh when you go to turn in your bounties on different characters or each day just go ahead and equip it and turn in the bounties or pop a telemetry and then turn in the bounties and you can get a lot of xp very quick for that weapon and level it up so overall i do like the weapon um, it's a very interesting weapon in the fact that you can upgrade it out of my normal weapons that I would use. I pretty much always use my Suros, so I still like my Suros better. And compared to the Shadow Price, I do like the Shadow Price better. Here's an old Shadow Price that I have that's not quite maxed out. But if it were maxed out, looking at max stats between the two of them, the Adelon Ally goes to 324 attack, so it has more attack, whereas the old Shadow Price that I have is only 300. The Shadow Price has a slower fire rate and only 25 rounds in the magazine, but it has at least four times the amount of impact. It has more range. It has almost double the amount of stability, and it has a slightly faster reload speed. So I do have to still say for the moment, at least while it's a legendary variant, I like the Shadow Price better than I like the Edelon Ally, but that is personal preference. Uh, this is still a very cool weapon, and uh, I'll definitely keep it, level it up, and then uh, you know when the hard raid comes out, I will go ahead and uh, actually basically um, get it upgraded to the exotic. Because I do like that about this weapon that it can be upgraded to an exotic since that's the first weapon that I've seen that will upgrade to an exotic. That is uh, going to be a lot of fun. So I appreciate you guys watching the video and sticking with me through it. I know it's a longer video but I wanted to put it up to answer all questions about the Husk of the, Pisk, uh, husk of the Pit. Sorry about that. Um, and the Elon Ally which is the legendary variant of that weapon so if you have any questions comments post a comment under the video if you like the video go ahead give it a like and uh, subscribe to my channel for more videos so thanks for watching